Hello, today I am going to discuss about the effect of differential pressure on the valve lift or the valve opening or the valve travel. Okay, so there is two types of actuator I am going to discuss. One is the reverse acting actuator, then the other one is the direct acting actuator. Okay, before we talk about the relationship between the valve opening and the air pressure curve, let's talk about direct acting and reverse acting actuator. This is a reverse acting actuator. How we know? Because the instrument air is applied to the bottom of the actuator. This is called reverse acting actuator. The valve body itself is a direct acting. Okay? So don't be confused about the actuator and the valve body. This part is the actuator. This part is the valve body. Okay. So when we talk about control valve, we usually refer to the whole things. As for this actuator, okay, this valve body, of course, is a direct acting valve body. All right. This actuator is a direct acting actuator. How do we know? Because the instrument air is supplied or applied to the top of the actuator so <clears throat> for this reverse acting actuator when the instrument air is applied to the bottom of the actuator what will happen is the instrument air will try to push the diaphragm upward and thus compressing the actuator spring as a result the actuator stem and the valve stem will move upward and thus cause the valve plug to move up and open the valve seat or orifice and the fluid can flow. Okay. As for this direct acting actuator, what happened is when the instrument air is applied to the top of the actuator, this instrument air will push this actuator diaphragm downward and compress the actuator spring and because of this the actuator stem and the valve stem will move downward and thus cause the valve plug to move downward to close the valve seat okay so when the air the instrument air is stopped or we cut off the supply what will happen the spring that was compressed just now will start to spring in the opposite direction. Not in other words, it will move outward and thus open the valve. That's why this is called spring to open or fill open valve. Okay. I have a video that talk about uh, direct acting and reverse acting actuator and also the direct acting and reverse acting valve body. So please refer to my previous video. I will indicate the link in the YouTube description below. So, so <clears throat> for direct acting actuator, this is the graph showing the relationship between the valve opening and the instrument air pressure that applied to the actuator. Right? When we supply more than 0.2 bar or more than 3 psi, what happens is the valve will start to open. You can see the graph here. Anything above the pressure, it will start to open the valve. Okay, supply here, if you supply the instrument air pressure more than 0 0.2 bar, okay, more than 0 0.2 bar or 3 psi, it will push, it will start to push the diaphragm outward, thus open the valve. All right, okay, when we supply pressure up to one bar or about 15 psi what will happen is it will fully open the valve okay so if i apply maximum pressure of one bar or 15 psi to the actuator what happened this one bar or 15 psi pressure will push the actuator diving to the maximum outward position okay thus the attached stems and the valve plug will move upward to the maximum position and fully open the valve. However, when we install the same control valve to in the fuel side, 
the result we get may be slightly different from what we get in the workshop. This curve, the red line showing the curve that you may get in the field side. Okay, this is called in-service response. In the field side, there is a process running, right? During the process running, there will be a differential pressure exists in the valve body. The differential pressure is the difference of pressure between the upstream and the downstream. And this differential pressure will add a bond the valve plug and try to push the valve plug upward, right? So this will provide additional force in addition to the instrument air pressure that applied to here, to this actuator diaphragm. In other words, it's actually the differential pressure actually helping the instrument air, pre air pressure to push the valve in the outward position, meaning to open the valve, right? So, where instead of supply air pressure more than 0.2 bar or 3 psi in order to open the valve, you actually need only 0.1 bar to open the valve. Okay, instead of supply about 1 bar or 15 psi instrument air pressure to the actuator in order to fully open the valve, you only need about 0.9 bar in order to fully open the valve. Then how about the direct acting actuator? Okay, for direct acting actuator, this is the graph, okay, showing the relationship between the valve opening and air pressure. Again, when we do the bench test in our workshop, this is the relationship that we can, we can get. This is a curve, ideal curve that we get, okay? When we reduce the pressure lesser than one bar or 15 psi, there's a lesser pressure here. So the valve will start to open, right? So if we apply, if we reduce the pressure until 0 0.2 bar or 3 psi, what will happen? It will fully open the valve. However, when we install the same control valve in the field, this is a curve that we get, which is quite different from the ideal curve that we get in the workshop. Why? Because of the differential pressure of the fluid. When the, pro the process is running, there is a differential pressure exists between the upstream and the downstream. And the differential pressure will act upon the valve plug and it will try to push the valve plug outward. So it works against the instrument air pressure. So you need about around 1.1 bar in order to start to move the valve. So instead of need of, uh, instead of reduce the pressure all the way down to 0 0.2 bar or 3 psi in order to fully open the valve, maybe you only need about 0 0.3 bar, okay, to fully open the valve. So this is the relationship between the valve opening and air pressure for both reverse acting and direct acting actuator. Thanks.